Chapter 1 Sabrina Roberts woke just before her alarm went off, as she did every morning. Today was the day the general contractor started his work on the bed and breakfast she was opening with her cousin Becca. She shut off the alarm, noting that it was 4.45 on the dot. She had an hour and 45 minutes before the contractor would be there, which gave her plenty of time for a morning run. She loved living in Silver Springs, Colorado, the most beautiful town on God's green earth. She brushed her teeth and changed into her shorts and a sweatshirt, with a tank top and sports bra underneath. When she got too hot, she'd strip off the shirt and tie it around her waist. Bree briefly considered knocking on her cousin Becca's door, but she decided against it. Becca tended to sleep late, and she wouldn't disturb her unnecessarily, though it was always tempting. Instead she headed down two flights of stairs and to the kitchen, grabbing a bottle of water before heading out the front door. She liked to run out by the river and win through town, almost always ended up at her sister, Emma's coffee shop, books and beans. As soon as she was out the front door, she put her headphones in and turned her music up loud. She listened to the same thing as she ran every morning, show tunes. Her playlist was always in the same order. She was too organized for that scrambling of the song's nonsense. She'd start with the one that you want from Greece, and slowly make her way through the sound of music, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, Oklahoma, West Side Story, Gypsy, and she'd cool down with My Fair Lady. Her morning routine had been perfected while she was in college, and it was always the same. She ran along the river, from the Band B, which was situated on the far north end of town on Main Street, first going west and then heading south. She cut back over to Main on Seminary, and then ran to the coffee shop at the corner of 8, Sup TH slash Sup and Main. It took her precisely 57 minutes to make it to Books and Beans, and then she'd buy a coffee, chat with her sister, Emma, for a few minutes, and walk back to the Band B as a cool down. She started out at a slow jog, and then when it was time to head south, she poured on the speed. Before she was on Main, she'd stripped off her sweatshirt and tied it around her waist. A few cars honked at her, but everyone in town knew her, so she just waved and kept going. If they needed to talk to her, they knew where to find her. She leaned over with her hands on her knees for a moment, resting before she stepped into the coffee shop. Her sister was pouring her regular order into a to-go cup. I'll put it on your tab. Emma handed her a biscuit with egg and cheese, knowing she'd eat it on the way home and start working as soon as she had showered. Brie was nothing if not predictable. Brie smiled. You do that. She knew that Emma wasn't really keeping a tab, but she always said she was. Her sister wouldn't let her pay a dime until the band B was making them money. Quiet morning. Emma shook her head. You're the only person who shows up before six. That's why it's quiet. Then why do you open at 5.30? Bree asked with a silly grin. You know as well as I do, we don't open till six. You still insist on showing up early, and I keep giving you coffee. One of these days, I'm going to make you wait outside in the pouring rain. Bree rolled her eyes. Contractor comes today. I'm getting excited. We officially open two months from today. You're cutting it to the wire. I hope he gets everything done in time. It's not like he's doing all the work, just the stuff Becca and I can't do ourselves. I'm going to paint one of the bedrooms today while he starts adding in the last two bathrooms we need. We'll get there. What's his name? Isn't he new in town? Yeah. I haven't met him yet. Becca dealt with him while I went and talked to Dad about the loan. Bree sighed. When we first decided to turn Grandma's house into a band B, I don't think either of us had any idea of the work involved. You'll survive, Emma said, grinning. I started my own coffee shop and bookstore, if you'll remember. I know what kind of work goes into something like that. Bree lifted a hand in a wave. Gotta go meet the contractor and get him to work. Sure hope he likes show tunes. 
Emma laughed. No one likes show tunes the way you do. Can I help it that I have spectacular taste in music? Bree pushed the door open and walked north along Main Street, watching the small town come to life. She couldn't believe there were people who slept until six. It was crazy. They didn't know what they were missing. She sipped at her coffee and ate her breakfast as she walked. In another couple of months, she'd be cooking breakfast for a group every morning. She couldn't wait. When Brie got back to the band B, she found a man waiting on the front steps. Can I help you? I'm Anthony Black, the contractor. I was supposed to be here at 6. No, you were supposed to be here at 6.30. I always get back from my run at 10 after. Well, aren't you punctual? He muttered. Show me where to start. Brie made a face behind his back. If he was going to be this difficult to work with, maybe they should find someone else. Of course there were no other contractors in town, so she'd have to deal with him. We have a small bedroom that we want converted into two bathrooms on the second floor. She led the way into the house and up the stairs. There's other small stuff to be done, but this is the most important thing that we need you for. He looked around as he walked through. Nice house. Must have cost you a fortune. She shook her head. My grandmother died when I was in college, and she left this house to me and my cousin. We'd always dreamed of turning it into a place where we'd take paying guests. We thought about a quaint little inn, but decided the space was more suited for a band bee. Don't you think? He shrugged, not willing to answer. He was still annoyed over being kept waiting. She led him into a bedroom, with a smaller room off of it. We want this room chopped into two bathrooms, with doors leading to both sides, so both beds have a private bath. Okay? I can do it. I think the baths will be tiny, but I can do it. Thank you. We'd appreciate that. Do you have the blueprints we had drawn up? Becca had met with him the previous week, and she didn't know exactly what had transpired other than he'd agreed to do the work. He nodded. Yup. Get out of my way, and I'll get to work. He made a shooing motion with his hand, and she rolled her eyes. She hoped he wouldn't be like this every morning. Aren't you just a ray of sunshine? You were late, lady. Move it, and I'll get started. Bree glared at him as she left, climbing the stairs to the attic. She and Becca had taken the attic and had it divided into two bedrooms and a bath, while they worked on renovations at the first floor. They didn't want to take up prime guest space. She showered and changed into old jeans and a t-shirt, knowing her cousin would sleep a couple of more hours. After going to the kitchen and starting the pot of coffee her cousin would need when she finally crawled out of bed, she went down to the second floor where she'd draped sheets in one of the bedrooms the night before to get it ready to paint. She set her phone up with speakers and started her work playlist, which encompassed songs from Wicked, Singin' in the Rain, The Music Man, and Mame. She'd play the songs on a loop all day as she painted. She cranked it up high, so she could sing as loudly as she wanted and still hear the music over her dreadful voice. With the window open, she picked up her roller brush and began the long process of painting the room. This one would be the wicked room. She was painting it the exact same color as Elphaba's skin, and she would accent it with black. There would be a witch's hat, like the one Galinda gave Elphaba, hanging on one wall. Oh, she was most excited about this room. The singing in the rain room would be fun, with umbrellas and outlines of the stars, but the wicked room? It was sure to be her favorite. She'd been working for about 15 minutes when she glanced over at the door to see Anthony glaring at her. What is that crap you're listening to? She leaned down to pause her music. Crap? This is Defying Gravity from Wicked. Have you never seen it? He folded his arms over his chest, and after checking the wall behind him, leaned back against it. That's the world's ugliest shade of green. You trying to kill your business? This is going to be our wicked room. 
so I'm painting it the same color as Elphaba's skin, Brie explained patiently. Elpha what? She's the Wicked Witch of the West, the main character of Wicked. He frowned at her. You mean like from the Wizard of Oz? Are you kidding me? Of course not. She and Glinda, the Good Witch, are best friends in the musical. It's fabulous. The next time it comes to Denver, you should go see it. Are you asking me out on a date while you're painting this room ugly? Anthony raised an eyebrow at her. He knew better, but he could already see she was going to be fun to annoy. Brie blushed, embarrassed that he'd think that of her. No, of course I'm not asking you out. I don't even know you. And now you're telling me you want to get to know me better. Well, I guess we could go out. I don't really know anyone in town yet. What are you doing for dinner this evening? She stared at him in shock. I just met you this morning. I can't go out with you. I didn't ask you to sleep with me. What would a date hurt? I'm lonely. You're lonely. I'm not lonely. Then why are you asking me out? He shook his head. I've never met a woman quite as contrary as you are, and you haven't even told me your name yet. Don't you think you should tell a man your name before asking him out? I didn't ask you out. He looked at her as if she'd lost her mind. Sure you did, and I'm saying yes. I'll pick you up at six. Make sure you get all that green off of you. I don't want to feel like I'm dating the Wicked Witch of the West. He walked off, strolling lazily. She glared at his back. How are we ever going to get this house done on time with a lazy contractor? No, I'm going to talk to Becca, and we'll find someone else. That man is going to drive me bonkers. She reached down and flipped her music back on, turning it up a notch. If she was going to annoy him, she was going to do it right. At eleven, she snapped the lid onto the can of paint and went to the kitchen, washing her hands carefully. She turned on her kitchen music as soon as she was there, playing songs from lesser-known musicals that she loved. She was a true kitchen magician, one of the reasons they'd decided on a bed and breakfast. She loved the idea of making breakfast every morning for a small crowd of people. She whipped up a quick casserole, knowing that Becca would be down and hungry soon. Brie almost always cooked every meal, because Becca simply didn't enjoy cooking the way she did. They had moved into the house together when they'd inherited during college, both of them going to the small satellite university there in Silver Springs. She popped the baking dish with the casserole into the oven and picked up her Kindle off the counter. She loved to read, and she was excited to read the latest by Jolene Gold, her favorite writer. She turned the Kindle on and immersed herself in the author's latest book, waiting for lunch to be finished. Asterisk. Anthony was on his knees, prying up the flooring in the room that would soon be two bathrooms when something heavenly hit his nose. He hadn't had a good home-cooked meal in a while, tending to eat more fast food than he should. He'd planned to go to the Golden Arches for lunch, but that smell. He got up, following his nose, without realizing what he was doing. He had to talk whichever of the Roberts women was cooking into feeding him. It was a moral imperative. He'd drop to one knee and propose if that's what it took. He'd be more than willing to marry a woman who could cook like that. When he got to the kitchen, he saw the pretty little girl he'd been dealing with all morning sitting at the table, her eyes glued to the device in her hands. Watch a readin'? She looked up at him with a frown. A book by my favorite writer. Mystery? Sci-fi? Romance? She looked back down at the book, refusing to give him the time of day. Romance? I should have known a girl who wants to open a bed and breakfast and is obsessed with The Wizard of Oz would read romance novels. He sat down at the table across from her, plucking a grape from the bowl in front of her. Maybe she wouldn't realize she was being bamboozled into feeding him. What's your first name anyway? She sighed. It's Brie. Brie? What kind of name is Brie? 
He grabbed an apple from the basket at the center of the table and crunched into it. It's short for Sabrina, but no one calls me that. My sister started calling me Brie when I was a baby, because she couldn't say Sabrina. That works. I like it. Can I call you Brina if I feel like it? Brie glared at him. You can, but I won't answer to it. He reached out and took her hand in his. Ah, is that any way to treat the man you're dating? Dating? We are not dating. You have lost your mind. Hey, you asked me out, not the other way around. I wouldn't mind coming here for supper though. She shook her head. I don't think that's a good idea. I guess a restaurant is better then. What is wrong with you? Are you always this pushy? Anthony gave her his best offended look. Pushy? You're the one who asked me out, not the other way around. She snatched her hand from his. You are being ridiculous. He shrugged. You think what you want. How many places should I set for lunch? He got up and wandered to the cabinets, opening one after the other, trying to find the plates. Sit down. I'll set the table. She hadn't planned to feed him, but she couldn't very well tell him no. She'd been raised with better manners than that. My cousin, Becca, will be joining us for lunch, I'm sure. I haven't seen her all day. Where is she? She's more of a night owl than me. That's why we do well together. I'm sure she's just now making herself presentable for the day. I resent that, Becca said from the doorway, walking into the kitchen and helping herself to a cup of coffee from the pot Brie had started after her shower. I'm always presentable. Even first thing in the morning. Brie set the table. I've been painting the wicked room all morning. Please tell me that hideous green looks better on the walls than I think it does. Becca looked over at Anthony. She's determined to have a wicked room. I was okay with the Old West theme for the Seven Brides for Seven Brothers room. I dealt with the New York City theme for the West Side Story room. But that ugly green for the wicked room? No one is going to want to stay there. I told her it was ugly. She wouldn't listen to me. Anthony sighed. No one ever listens to the contractor. They do whatever they want anyway. Don't you two gang up on me? Brie exclaimed, a frown on her face. You agreed to a wicked room when we discussed it, Beck. I know I did, but I didn't know you were going to match the walls to Elphaba's skin color. Becca shuddered delicately. It's going to be hideous. It will be lovely. Stop complaining. I know it's going to be the most popular room. Brie pulled the casserole out of the oven and plopped some on each of the plates, serving them all. If you want drinks, get them. We're not open for business, and I'm not serving anyone who's complaining about my wicked room. Becca looked at Anthony. Do you want water, milk, or coffee? No soda? He asked, frowning. I want a Pepsi. Brie looked up from her plate, glaring at him. Then bring your own. Becca was obviously shocked. Brie, what has gotten into you? You're never rude to people. He's on my last nerve, Brie said as she took another bite. She chewed slowly, before continuing. I have never met anyone quite so presumptuous in my entire life. Wow. Becca looked at Anthony, obviously impressed. No one gets under her skin that fast. It took her brother years to make her that prickly. Anthony sighed. She hurt my feelings. I'm wounded and may never be able to drink Pepsi again. Bree refused to respond to that. He obviously wanted attention and she wasn't about to give it to him. You'd think she'd be nicer to me since we're practically engaged, he said, drawing Becca's attention again. Becca giggled. I have to hear this. She put a glass of water in front of Anthony, since he hadn't asked for anything else. Practically engaged? 
She asked me out while I was talking to her about the shade she was painting that god-awful room. Becca looked at Bree in shock. You asked him out? Did you ask him to marry you too? Bree kicked Anthony under the table, feeling quite satisfied with herself when he yelped with pain. I did not ask him out. She knew her cousin was just playing along with him, but it still annoyed her. Why wouldn't he let it go? We're going to a restaurant tonight. I tried to talk her into cooking for me again, but I think she's worried we're moving too quickly. The whole thing about the way to a man's heart is through his stomach? I'm already more than halfway in love with her after this meal. Anthony calmly took another bite of his lunch, enjoying it immensely. Bree really could cook. Bree thought for a moment about turning his words on him and telling him she was in love with him too, but she had a feeling it would backfire terribly. She'd never been good at teasing, because her nature was too serious. Go away, Anthony. He raised an eyebrow. I thought you needed those bathrooms done quickly. She sighed. I do need them done. I just don't want to have to deal with you to get them. Becca started chuckling softly, and after a moment it turned into a full-blown laugh. You two are going to keep me very entertained for the next month, aren't you? Bree ignored her cousin and just kept eating. Why do I have to put up with idiots? Becca's normally my best friend, but put her with Anthony, and I want to strangle them both. Oh, Becca, I can't believe you're laughing at my pain. I'll perish without Brina's love. Brina? Becca asked. You already have a special nickname for her? It is true love, isn't it? I don't ever want to talk to either of you again, Brie responded calmly getting up from the table and rinsing her plate before putting it in the dishwasher. You two just keep laughing. I'm going to go listen to messages and see if we have any reservations, and then I'm going to finish painting the wicked room. It's going to be beautiful. She left the room with her head held high, stalking off to listen to the messages in the office. Becca looked at Anthony with wide eyes. Bree gets along with everyone. What did you do to her? Anthony shrugged. I have no idea, but I think I'm in love. What's her favorite flower? Becca started laughing again. She's a fan of lilacs. Lilacs? There's a florist in town, isn't there? There is. Are you going to bring flowers when you pick her up for your date tonight? Of course, I am. What kind of cad do you think I am? I'm going to woo your cousin like she's never been wooed before. By the time the week is over, she'll be as in love with me as I am with her. Anthony? Yes? You've lost your ever-loving mind. I'm glad though, because I haven't seen a firework show this good since I was a little girl. She stood and washed off her plate, putting it into the dishwasher. Anthony watched her leave and grinned. This was going to be a fun job. Chapter 2 Before leaving for the day, Anthony stopped in the wicked room to see Brie. She was just about finished and had a small amount of hideous green paint on her nose. He grinned when he saw her as he leaned against the door jamb. Just as ugly as it was earlier. Brie glared at him. Don't you have anywhere to be? I do. I have to hurry home and shower and change because I want to look good for our date tonight. I thought I'd take you to River House for a little dinner and dancing. I didn't ask you out, Anthony. She'd never in her life asked a man out. Maybe it was old-fashioned, but it didn't feel right to her. He stepped closer to her, rubbing his thumb across her nose to remove the paint. But we're still going out, right? Do you want to go out with me just to give me a hard time? He shook his head. I want to go out with you, because I find you fascinating. So far I've seen you dripping in sweat and covered in paint. I have a feeling you're going to clean up good, and I'm going to want to sweep you off your feet. She sighed. I guess one date won't hurt too much. But you have to promise to behave yourself. River House was a Silver Springs institution. Her grandparents had their first date there 
and so had her parents. Like most businesses in town, it had been run by generation after generation of the same family. She'd been for a celebratory dinner with family members, but never on a date. Her senior prom didn't count, because Larry Bergdorf had left her in the middle of the dance floor to drool over one of the cheerleaders who had just broken up with her boyfriend. Bree ended up having to call her big brother to drive her home, so how could that possibly count as a date at the most exclusive restaurant in town? He grinned, surprised at how her answer made him feel. I'll be here at six. I'll be ready. She looked down at her hands. And hopefully no longer green. I'll see you then. Bree watched him go, thinking about what an idiot she was as she painted the last little bit of wall. She needed to do the painting in the Sound of Music room tomorrow. She'd do three walls in a light gray and one in white. And she'd found a fabric that matched the curtains Maria had made clothes for the children out of. Of course, her fabric would be for the curtains, and her mother had promised to make a quilt for the bed as well. She stepped back and admired her handiwork, pleased with how it looked. She knew it was an odd color, but it would suit the tone of the room she was trying to create perfectly. It may not be for everyone, but she thought most would like it. Bandby's Bandby was getting there. She still had a flutter in her stomach every time she thought about how soon they'd open. When she was done, she carried her roller down to the basement to wash it out in the utility sink. For some reason, her grandmother's basement had scared her when she was a child, but she loved the changes they'd made to it. They'd had a commercial washer and dryer put in just last month, and they'd painted to make it look a bit less stark. Half of the basement was now finished as well, and would be a good place for her and Becca to relax once the guests started coming. They'd put in a couch and a little television, knowing it would be where they'd relax together. An hour later, she'd showered and was standing in a robe in her bedroom, digging through her closet. What should she wear for the first date with a man that made her crazy? She couldn't find anything good. Maybe she could borrow something from Becca. She picked up her cell phone and dialed her cousin, knowing she was spending the day in the yard, planning out their flower beds. She wouldn't be able to plant for another six weeks or so, but she was going to have everything ready to go as soon as it looked like the last frost was over. Becca wasn't as talented at domestic chores as Bree was, but she could help clean the rooms and keep up the lawn, snow shoveling, and gardening. Together, they made a great team. What's up? Becca never could seem to answer the phone like a normal human. I can't figure out what to wear tonight. For your date with Anthony? I still can't believe you asked him out. Would you please stop picking on me for long enough to get up here and help me find clothes? I need you. On my way. The call ended abruptly, and a minute or two later, Becca hurried into the room. Where are you going? River House. Becca's eyes widened. River House? Well. We haven't been there since prom. The cousins were only a week apart, and they'd gone through most of their rites of passage together. I know. We talked about going there when we decided to open this place, but we wanted to save the money for the renovations. And we still had to borrow money. Becca shook her head. Okay, wait right there. I have just the thing. Bree was a little worried at Becca's tone. Her cousin was a great deal more wild in her clothing choices than she was. Nothing skanky. I don't wear skanky. I wear normal. You dress like a nun, Becca said as she walked back into the room, a vivid blue dress thrown over one arm. This is going to match your eyes perfectly. You have to wear it. I have to, do I? Brie took the dress and frowned. All of her dresses and skirts came to just past the knee, and not a one showed any cleavage at all. This dress, it was definitely not the type of dress she would normally wear. I don't know, Becca. I'd feel awfully exposed. Try it on for me. Please. Becca had been trying to help Brie with her wardrobe for years, and she wasn't going to give up easily. Fine. 
I'll try it, but no promises. Bree dropped her robe to the floor. She'd known she'd wear a dress, so she already had her undergarments on. She didn't mind wearing just a slip in front of the cousin, who was practically her sister. They'd lived in one another's pockets since they were tiny. As soon as her cousin pulled down her dress, Becca started nodding excitedly. That's the perfect dress. Let me fix your hair, and then you can look in the mirror. And I call dibs on makeup too. Aren't you supposed to be working? Bree asked, frowning. She tugged at the neckline of the dress, trying to show just a bit less boobage. How could she possibly go out in public this way? Stop fussing with the neckline. I'll make up the hour I miss this weekend. Becca took her shoulder and pushed her down onto the bed. Wait there. I'm going to make you look like an angel still, but one who's not quite so sweet. Bree sighed. I normally look sour? Becca shook her head. No, I'm the sour one. You're the sweet one. Get it right. Bree refused to reply to that. She watched instead as her cousin hurried from the room and came back with a makeup bag, hairbrush, and blow dryer. Are you sure you know what you're doing? I did my hair and makeup just this morning. I don't look like a tramp or a troll, do I? Is there nothing between tramp and troll? Yup, there is. Me. Now hush up as I do this. Becca went to work on her shoulder-length hair first, blow-drying and using a round brush on it. When she was completely finished, she took a step back and nodded. You're going to have that man slipping in his own drool, because he won't be able to quit salivating when he sees you. Oh great. What if he sues me for hurting him, and we lose the band B? We'll never lose band B's band B. Now go look in the mirror. Becca stood expectantly, watching as her cousin walked slowly to the full-length mirror on the back of the bathroom door that connected their rooms. Well? Bree turned her head one way, and then the other, liking how her hair bounced. Looking at how low the dress was, she started to reach up and try to pull it up again but she realized that she showed less than Miss Piggy from the Muppets. If a Muppet could show that much cleavage, so could she. Are you sure I don't look, well, trampy? You look as wholesome as ever. You just don't look quite as, um, Disney-esque. Disney-esque? Why do you make up weird words and then casually drop them into conversation as if they belong there? Becca shrugged. Because I can. It's not like I'm campaigning to get the word into the dictionary. Bree frowned. You know, I read that my favorite writer is actually doing that. She thinks Bobalicia should be in the Oxford English Dictionary. And now I know better why you're so strange. Becca poked her cousin. Well? Do you like it? Bree nodded. I shouldn't, but I do. I'm wearing it. She turned to Becca and hugged her. Thank you for always being here when I need you. That's what cousins and business partners are for. Becca stepped back and studied Bree carefully. You need a necklace. I have just the one. She hurried to her room and came back with a pretty heart on a chain. That's perfect. Draws a little more attention to the girls. You know that's all he's going to be looking at anyway. Bree frowned, sticking her leg out. Hey, my legs are good too. I have runner's legs. Oh, trust me, he'll sneak a peek at those, but the girls look good tonight. He was really watching you at lunch today. He gets on my nerves, but he's cute. Becca smiled. I'm glad you're giving him a chance. He seems like such a nice guy. Bree shrugged. I'm sure it won't go anywhere, because he's totally not my type, but I'll give him a shot. The doorbell rang, and Bree looked at the clock. He's five minutes early. Being prompt is a good thing. Go down there. Bree took a deep breath, one hand going to her stomach, to calm her nerves. Every date she'd ever been on had been with guys she'd known her entire life. 
It was nerve-wracking to go out with a guy she'd just met. Hurrying through the house, she opened the door to find Anthony in a suit and tie. She blinked a couple of times, surprised at how different he looked. He thrust a bouquet of flowers at her. She took them and brought them to her nose. Lilacs. My favorite. Let me put them in water, and then I'm ready to go. Anthony admired her as she walked away. You should grab a coat. I hate to ruin the look, but it's supposed to snow again tonight, and I don't want you to freeze. She nodded, grabbing a coat from the front closet, only to have him take it from her and help her with it. She wasn't used to manners like that, but she wasn't about to complain. He seemed to be on his best behavior tonight. Thank you so much for the flowers. You're welcome. I wanted to show you that I do know how to be a gentleman, when I try. She grinned, taking the arm he offered to get down the front steps. The shoes Becca had slipped onto her feet were heels, and she rarely wore them. She was a no-nonsense type of girl, and she felt like she was playing dress-up tonight. It's good of you to try for me then. He drove them the short distance to River House in his mid-size SUV. Have you always lived in Silver Springs? Yup. My family actually started this town back in the 1800s. I can't imagine living anywhere else. I even went to college at the Silver Springs branch of the University of Colorado. I lived at home until my grandmother died, and when my cousin and I inherited her house together, we moved in. We've been slowly doing renovations for the past two years, trying to get it ready to go. We both graduated in August, after the summer semester, and we've been working hard ever since. Sorry about your grandmother. Bree sighed. She was a pretty spectacular lady. I'll never forget her. Do your parents still live here? Of course. My parents and my brother and my sister and my six cousins. She frowned. Well, one of my cousins has been traveling for work, but most of us are here. He pulled into the parking lot of the restaurant and turned to her, his hand taking hers. Before I forget, I want to tell you that you look beautiful tonight. She blushed. Thank you. You look pretty good yourself. Can I tell you a secret? Sure. I feel naked without my tool belt. She blushed. I feel kind of bare now that I've washed off all the green paint. I was going to give Elphaba a run for her money. You're really obsessed with that show, aren't you? She nodded. Well, yeah. With all musicals, really. You're not going to start quoting one of those old sappy shows, are you? Bree leaned close, her lips against his ear. I break into song at a moment's notice. Anthony pulled back, looking into her eyes. We should do something before we go into the restaurant. What's that? She couldn't believe how comfortable she was with him this evening when he'd been a royal pain in her behind all day. It was strange. Why did she suddenly have this little flutter in her tummy when she talked to him? We should get the first kiss out of the way. What? Why? He shrugged. Then we'll know how to act. We won't know how to act if we don't kiss? Anthony shrugged. Here's my theory. I'm bracing myself for it. The man seemed to blow hot and cold. He was definitely an enigma. I think if we kiss now, we'll know if we have chemistry or not. If we don't, then we spend the evening as friends and have a good time without the added pressure of the whole date thing. If we do, then we have all the pressure, but we at least know where we're headed. She sighed, shaking her head. Nope. You're not going to talk me into a kiss that way. You're going to have to pay for dinner and hope for a kiss like every other date I've been on. Thanks for playing, though. He grinned. It was worth a try, right? You won't get around me with that little boy look. I've known too many men like you. You're interested for an hour or two, and then you see someone prettier. I'm not holding my breath. 
I think you'll find me different than the men who have broken your heart in the past. Besides, I couldn't find someone prettier. She had to ignore the first part of his comment for her own sanity. That's the thing though, Bree said quietly. I've never had my heart broken, because I've never let anyone get close enough to get a shot at it. Maybe it's time. He got out of the car, and came around to open her door for her. Are you always this mannerly, or is it a first date thing? I never have been in the past, but I have a feeling I always will be with you. He opened the door for the restaurant, and they went to the host. Reservations for two. Name is Black. Of course. Right this way, Mr. Black. He led them to a small quiet corner, with a view of the river, handing them both menus. I hope you enjoy your meal. Bree studied her menu, trying to decide. She tried to eat healthy, but sometimes all she could think about was a nice steak. She wondered what he'd say if she ordered something like that, but decided to play it safe, and chose a less expensive chicken dish. When she'd finished choosing, she saw his menu, closed in front of him and his eyes on her. So tell me about you. You're new to town. Where are you from? I grew up in Denver. Lived there until about a month ago, when I came here. I was tired of the fast-paced city life, and decided it was time for a change. I figured a tourist town like Silver Springs would keep a contractor busy with work. Any relationships there? He shook his head. Not anymore. I dated some, but wasn't really serious about anyone. I guess I had to see the right girl covered in green paint before I was ready to settle down. She rolled her eyes. Ready to settle down? Maybe we should marry and have babies. Want to do that? She waited for him to jump up and run from the restaurant, but instead he nodded. I knew you'd propose. And you did. Now I can tell the whole world about your marriage proposal. Someday I'll tell our grandkids that Grandma Brina asked me to marry her on our first date. I thought you weren't going to tease me tonight? Brie glared at him. The waiter came to their table then to get their orders. As soon as he was gone, Anthony apologized. I did promise that, and I'm very sorry. No more teasing. He just hadn't been able to resist that one. Thank you. She truly didn't mind being teased. Her extended family was big enough and close enough that she was used to being teased often. Does that mean that there won't be a wedding, though? Because I think I'm ready for that. A few minutes ago, you wanted to kiss me to see if we really have good chemistry between us. Now you're ready to marry me? The look she gave him would have had a lesser man cringing visibly. I was just trying to get a kiss. You didn't think I really meant any of that hogwash, did you? She sighed. How am I ever going to know when you're being serious and when you're joking? If my mouth is moving, I'm probably joking. So you weren't really upset when I got there later than you thought I should this morning? He frowned. Well, maybe a little. We should talk about that. I hate for my work time to be wasted. What time should I get there in the mornings? I don't want to show up and you not be there again. Get there at 6.30. I'll be in from my run by then. Just come in the house. You know where to go and what needs to be done. I might still be in the shower then. Now that's something I'd like to see. She looked at him blankly. What? You in the shower? She blushed. Just let yourself in. I didn't mean to embarrass you. Don't lie to me. You did mean to embarrass me. Well, maybe. But you're so pretty when you blush that I can't really help myself. He shrugged, making it clear that he wasn't even sorry. You're going to be interesting to have around for the next month until we open. And after that? You'll keep me around then too? Depends on how you behave until then. We'll probably need help with repairs still though. She broke off a piece of bread and buttered it, taking a bite. Then my job is safe. I guess so. 
How'd it go today? Are you going to be able to make the plans we had drawn up work? He nodded. I can, but we can't talk about work. We're here to get to know each other better. So tell me, what's your favorite thing to do in your spare time? You won't laugh? I promise I won't. He had a feeling he knew what she was going to say anyway. I love to run. I don't do it just for exercise or to stay in shape like a lot of people do. I feel powerful when I run. That's not the answer I expected at all. I figured you'd start talking about going to musicals. Well, I love that too, but I'd put running above that. You should come with me sometime. Anthony made a face. I haven't run in a long time. How far do you go? About eight miles every morning, she said, trying to hide her grin at his expression. I wouldn't mind watching, he told her. He couldn't imagine running that far. He'd run track in high school, but that was ten years ago. Running now sounded like absolute torture. We could go hiking. She shrugged. That would be fine. It wouldn't be the same feeling of exhilaration, but I like to hike. You're not going to give in until I run with you, are you? I came to dinner with you. He started to say that she'd asked him out, but he bit his tongue. He didn't want to start that again, not when he'd made a promise. I'll run with you. Give me two weeks to get up to speed, and then I'll be ready. She raised an eyebrow. You think you can go from no running at all to running eight miles in two weeks? Good luck with that. He sighed. I'm going to do my very best. Chapter 3 By the time they were finished with supper, Bree realized that there was a great deal more to Anthony than she'd realized. When they were in his SUV headed back to the band B, she kept looking at him, realizing just how handsome he was. There was something special about him she just hadn't noticed. She tended to see people how they treated her, so the most handsome man wasn't necessarily good-looking in her eyes, and it was just now that she was able to see him as, well, hot. When they pulled up into the small parking lot they'd had made for the band B, she started to open her door, but he stalled her with a hand on her arm. You promised me a kiss. I made no promises. She turned to him fully, tucking one leg under her. She knew she shouldn't sit like that in a dress, but sometimes it was hard to care. He sighed. Yeah, I guess you didn't. You told me I'd have to wonder all night if I'd get one, didn't you? Well? You know, it's a lot less pressure on the lady if you just lean in and go for it. Discussing it is kind of nerve-wracking. He stroked her cheek softly. I'll try that next time I kiss you. This time, I need permission. She laughed softly. I've not given you permission for anything. You invaded the wicked room and gave your opinion without my permission. You ate the food I made for lunch without permission. Just so you know, I plan to make a habit of that every day. She shook her head. You're something else, Anthony Black. She tilted her head to one side. Does no one call you Tony? Nope. My dad's Tony. I've always been Anthony. And do you have any siblings, Anthony? Nope. My mom had cancer when I was little. She died when I was two. Dad never remarried. He said he didn't deserve two loves like mom in one lifetime. I'm sorry. Her family had always been so close, she couldn't imagine growing up without a mom. Cousins? Nope. I have no one but my dad. Are you guys close? Yeah, we are. I worked for him until I moved here. He's been a general contractor my entire life, and he taught me everything I know. I went to college and got a degree in business, but I always knew I'd be doing what dad does. I think that's sweet. Why didn't you stay and work with him? He shrugged. I thought about it, but I needed to work on my own. Everyone dad worked with called me junior. How would you like to be called junior as a grown man? 
No, it was time for me to strike out on my own. I can see that. I could never have worked for my dad. He's the bank manager for Silver Spring Savings, but it would have made me crazy spending my whole life living under his thumb. Then you get it. He cupped her cheek with one hand, his thumb stroking it slowly. I do get it. She shivered at his touch. He'd made her feel more with the stroke of his thumb than she'd ever felt from another man, which surprised her despite her limited dating history. He leaned in and kissed her lips softly, his free hand stroking her hair away from her face. There's something awfully special about you, Brina. She wrinkled her nose at him. I thought you weren't going to kiss me until I gave you permission, she whispered, her hand on her stomach, trying to still the butterflies there. I'm a patient man, but not that patient. It was taking you forever. Bree laughed softly. You're going to be interesting to have around, aren't you? He shrugged. You're keeping me then? For kisses and random construction work? She sighed, wondering how to answer that. I don't know, I need to be concentrating on getting the band be up and running. I won't take up too much time, and I'm helping with the band be remember. If I told you to go away and come back in a few years when I'm ready for a relationship, what would you say? I'd probably still hang around begging for scraps from your table. I've decided to marry you, Brina Roberts. I don't know how you think you're going to stop me. She shook her head, determined to ignore his declaration of intent. No one wanted to marry someone they'd known less than 24 hours. The man was obviously missing a few screws. You'd think he'd be able to find more, since he was a contractor. The name is Bree. I know. I like Brina. With one last kiss pressed to her lips, he hurried around his truck to let her out, walking her to the door. I'll see you bright and early. Try to be on time tomorrow. Bree stood at the door watching him leave, wondering what she'd gotten herself into. One date had seemed so simple, but now that they'd had one, she wanted more and more. She couldn't be falling in love with a random stranger she'd met that morning, so she would just know that she liked him. That would have to be good enough. She practically floated up to bed. Her dreams would be full of Anthony and his sweet kisses. Asterisk. During her run the following morning, Bree passed Anthony, who was running the opposite direction along the river. She smiled and waved, but wasn't at all surprised when he turned around and fell into step beside her. She didn't remove her headphones from her ears, but simply kept running. Within half a mile, he'd waved to her and gone in another direction. It felt strange having him beside her as she ran, but good. Maybe a little too good. As she finished up her run at Books and Beans, she was still thinking about him. About how good he'd looked in his running clothes. About how soft his lips had been on hers the night before. How was she going to be able to stick to her guns and put her business first when he was there, tempting her to do otherwise? She walked into the coffee shop and found her sister there putting a lid on a large coffee. Well? How was your date? Emma asked. Bree frowned at her big sister. Really? I can't go on one date without all of creation knowing about it. Emma laughed. We're a tight-knit family in a small town. Of course you can't. Tell me about him. I heard he's funny and sexy. What else? Bree took a deep breath, wondering just what to say. He's both of those things. He drove me crazy yesterday, picking on me all day. I told him he needed to see Wicked if it ever comes to town, and he decided I was asking him out. She took the coffee from her sister and took a sip. I wasn't, but he said I was. He somehow manipulated his way into eating the casserole I fixed for Becca and me for lunch, and then I don't know how I really ended up going out with him. I heard you did not look like Brie. Were you really wearing one of Becca's dresses? I was. At first, I was freaked out because it showed a bit of cleavage, but I decided if Miss Piggy could show cleavage, so can I. 
She looks a lot trampier than I do in every movie she does. And she's a Muppet. Emma laughed softly. You're the only woman in the world who gauges how she should look based on Miss Piggy. Well, the Muppets are for kids, so if kids can see that much cleavage, it must not be horrible, right? Becca told me your girls looked really good. Bree sighed, shaking her head. Becca's insane. Well, that's a given. Emma grinned. I think you should have a muffin instead of an egg biscuit today. A bit of a celebration. Maybe a muffin with my egg biscuit. I need the protein from the egg. You're on. Did he kiss you? Emma gathered up the order, knowing her sister would want an orange muffin instead of a blueberry. Isn't there a saying about not kissing and telling? Becca said you'd bring that up and to remind you that sayings like that don't go for sisters or cousins. They need to know. Emma looked at her sister questioningly. Well? Well what? You know what? Did he kiss you? Bree shrugged. I don't have to answer that. I guess that means he did kiss you. And you liked it. Emma rolled the top of the sack with the food in it. You should be more forthcoming with information about your love life for your poor spinster sister. Bree laughed as she headed for the door. See you tomorrow morning. Don't forget it's your turn to take a dessert to mom's for lunch tomorrow. Emma called after her. Bree stepped outside and took a bite of her egg biscuit as she began her short walk to the band B. Her parents, sister, and brother Jack all met for lunch every Wednesday. Mom cooked the meal, but she and Emma took turns making dessert. Bree had offered to take the whole meal, but their mom had insisted it was her job. She loved to cook, so Bree didn't have a problem backing off. When she rounded the corner of 8 Sup TH slash Sup ST and saw Anthony's truck in the parking lot, her heart skipped a beat. After her shower, she'd have to casually check on him and see how he was doing. She hated the idea of him seeing her all hot and sweaty, but he already had that morning. And the previous morning. Surely he wouldn't change his mind about her now if he saw her that way again. He was sitting on the front steps eating a donut. I told you to go right in, she said. You said to go right in at 6.30. It's only 6.10. He took a swallow of the coffee in his hand. How was your run this morning? It was good. Cold front is moving in, and it'll be harder to run when it's all slick again. She shook her head. I'll find a way. She could run on the treadmill in the basement, but it wasn't the same. She liked to run outside. For February, the weather has been warm. She nodded. I've been thankful I could run outside the past few days. I hate using the treadmill. I didn't realize you had a treadmill. We've known each other for 24 hours. There's lots you still need to learn. She put her hand on the doorknob to go in. I'm going to get my shower. I'll check on you in a little while. You painting today? Yeah. I'm doing the sound of music room. No green walls? She made a face. Light gray today and one will remain white. She went into the house and straight up the stairs. She hated that he saw her all sweaty, but it didn't seem to bother him. Wanting to kiss him good morning had warred with her common sense. He'd already taken the time to go home and shower after his run. When she was presentable in jeans and an old t-shirt she didn't mind getting paint on, she started the coffee pot and then wandered into the bathrooms he was making. How's it coming? She'd taken more care with her appearance than she usually would when she planned on painting all day, but she was nervous about being around him. She hadn't liked a boy as much as she liked him since little Bobby Rehnquist in first grade, and he'd broken her heart by chasing Becca around at recess instead of her. He glanced up, a slow smile spreading across his face. It's good. I'll be done this month as promised. That's good, because I don't want to have to search for another contractor. I have no time for that nonsense. 
He walked over to her, one hand braced against the wall, beside her head. Other contractors wouldn't have everything you need. What do I need? she asked, raising one eyebrow. You need someone to kiss your off-kilter lips. Off-kilter? she asked. She knew what he meant. The entire Roberts family had smiles that were slightly off-center. It was odd. People in town knew her family immediately by their smiles. Yeah, they kind of list to the left. Makes them lots more fun to kiss. She laughed. I'm glad you think so. Because you like my kisses and can't live without them? He leaned down and brushed her lips with his. You know, we can't be doing this at work. I need to get the next room painted. He sighed. I guess not, but how am I supposed to look at you without wanting to kiss you? Brie grinned, wrapping her arms around his neck, knowing she was contradicting what she'd just said. Oh, I want you to want to kiss me. I just need you to refrain at work. He groaned. And that's why we need to get married. She shook her head with a laugh. I don't marry men I've known for only a day. I don't think it's a particularly wise thing to do. And my Brina makes a habit of always being wise, I can see it already. He kissed her once more. What are we having for lunch today? You really expect me to feed you every day? Anthony gave her his best puppy dog eyes. Yes. I'm going to make a big pot of creamy vegetable soup. That sounds good. And fresh bread? You expect me to bake fresh bread? He nodded, his eyes wide. Does it take a lot of work to do that? She shook her head. I'll do it. Lunch is at 11.30 sharp. I'll follow my nose to the kitchen. He watched her as she walked away, heading for the downstairs. He knew he was adding to her workload, but who could eat soup without fresh, hot bread? Brie hurried into the kitchen and pulled a loaf of frozen bread dough from the freezer. She'd let it rise on the counter and pop it into the oven at the same time she started the soup. She wouldn't have made the bread for just her and Becca, but she knew they would both enjoy the treat as well. Having a man working there was going to cause extra work for her, but he was so worth it. Asterisk. Anthony started to smell the bread baking shortly after eleven but he forced himself to keep working. He didn't want to delay the bathrooms being done when Brie was feeding him so generously. Five minutes before she'd told him to be in the kitchen, he washed his hands and headed down. He was disappointed to see Becca with her already. He nodded to both of the women, taking his seat at the table, which had already been set for three. Are you eating lunch with us every day? Becca asked, with a lopsided grin. The smile was the only way he could tell, for sure the women were blood-related. Anthony nodded. I can't go and pick up McDonald's after having Breeze cooking. It would be like spending my whole life drinking champagne and suddenly being forced to drink a watered-down cup of apple juice. Bree laughed. You trying to sweet-talk me, Mr. Black? His eyes met hers, and he was surprised when she looked away shyly. Not trying to sweet-talk anyone for anything, except my lunch. Every day till I'm done with those bathrooms. I may even take a bit off the price if the lunch is always as good as it was yesterday. No need for that. You're welcome to eat with us. Bree served three bowls of the creamy, light orange soup, and put a pile of slices of the fresh bread, already sliced, in the middle of the table on a plate. A stick of soft butter was placed beside it. Anthony didn't have to be told twice. He grabbed a knife and spread the butter in a thick layer on the bread, and all but moaned as he took a bite. My grandmother used to make fresh bread all the time until her arthritis got to be too bad for her to need it. I'm happy to bring back old memories then. Bree sat down at the table, taking a sip of water. Anthony said little while he ate applying himself to the meal in front of him. He worked hard, and he burned a lot of calories. He needed to pay full attention to his meals, especially when they tasted this good. What are you doing this afternoon? 
Bree asked Becca, watching Anthony, as he ate. She wasn't sure why it felt so good to see him tucking into her food the way he did, but it probably had something to do with her homemaker mother. Finishing up the garden plans, Becca responded, looking amused. I haven't decided for sure what I want to grow alongside the sidewalk that leads to the hot springs. How long does it take to walk to the springs from here? Anthony asked, taking a big swig of his drink. About five minutes, Bree said. They're just barely off our property. This is our ancestral home, and the family has always wanted to be as close as possible to the springs. And there's a sidewalk that leads there? Bree nodded. Yeah, it was one of the first things we had built. Too bad I wasn't around then. I would have insisted on an old-fashioned boardwalk. Wouldn't that have looked good? Maybe a gazebo halfway there. Anthony hated the idea of their pretty house, completely surrounded by concrete. Becca and Bree exchanged a look. That's what we wanted, but we were told it was ridiculous and would take too much to maintain. Maybe, but it would really help with the ambience. You could probably charge extra. Not for the ugly green room maybe, but for the rest of them. Bree wrinkled her nose. Why do you have to be difficult? Anthony grinned. I'll take a look at the sidewalk. Maybe I can either take it out or build the boardwalk over it. Better do it today, Becca told him. We're supposed to get at least six inches of snow tonight. Bree frowned. I guess I'm running on the treadmill in the morning. She'd get her run in and have coffee there at home instead. She hated when her routine changed. Will do, Anthony told them. I'll check it out right after lunch. Thanks. Bree wasn't sure they could afford a boardwalk, but she agreed with him about the look. Maybe it would help. The more projects they gave him the more she got to see him. How could there be a loser in that situation? Chapter 4 Just before quitting time that afternoon, Bree heard a female voice calling her. The band B wasn't officially open, but people in town still felt like they could just walk in to find her or Becca. Well, some of them did. Since the house was a work in progress, she didn't mind terribly much. She turned, cringing when she saw Jennifer Olson, her nemesis since kindergarten at Silver Springs Elementary. Bree, there you are. I need you. Bree sighed. What can I help you with, Jennifer? She couldn't stand the girl. Their antipathy for one another had started when Jennifer stole Bree's crayons and told her that she had an ugly smile. Bree had always been slightly self-conscious about the Roberts family smile. All of the cousins and their fathers had the same slightly off-center smile their grandpa had. I'm planning a 25th anniversary party for my parents, Jennifer said with a grin. That's great, Jennifer. Bree kept right on painting. Jennifer had gone to college there in town, just as she and Becca had. The difference was, Jennifer had never worked a day in her life. Her parents owned the hotel that bordered on the Banby property, and she'd never felt the need to do anything but look for a man. We're going to have it in the banquet room at the hotel, of course, but I was hoping you'd cater it. Bree wanted nothing more than to tell her no, but truthfully, she and Becca could use the startup cash. She hated taking out a loan, and she'd had to do that last week. A good catering job would help her a lot. And she and Becca had done a few while they were in school, so she knew they could handle it. Why don't you just use the hotel's restaurant? Jennifer shrugged. You know how my dad is. He always wants to eat things like sausage rolls and pigs in a blanket. She rolled her eyes. You'll cater to his unique tastes in food. So will the hotel restaurant. He owns it. As much as Bree needed the money, working for Jennifer would make her miserable for weeks. It won't be the same, though. Will you do it? Bree bit her lip. When's the party? We open in two months, and there's still a ton of work to be done. The more she played up her lack of time to do it, the more she could charge. 
She had no problem charging Jennifer an arm and a leg, because it would take that much to make it worth her time. Well, that's the thing. I want to do it a week from Saturday. I won't have a problem getting the hotel space, but the restaurant can't handle us on that short of notice, because there's a wedding that weekend. Brie closed her eyes and shook her head. You forgot about their anniversary, didn't you? So you're throwing together a party really fast so they won't realize it. She wished she didn't know Jennifer so well, but she did. The girl thought only of herself. Jennifer laughed. As if I'd forget my parents' anniversary. Her eyes didn't meet Bree's, though, and Bree knew her guess was dead on. I know better. It'll cost you double what I'd charge anyone else because of the short notice. How many people? Bree knew Jennifer could afford it, and she'd be spending some late nights, getting everything prepped and ready to go. Becca would help, but she wouldn't enjoy it. Two hundred or so. Bree had expected as much, but it would make for some late nights. She hated being up late. She named a figure, and Jennifer wrinkled her nose. Fine. Party starts at six. I'll expect you to have at least six servers. Shouldn't be a problem. There are always college students looking for work. Bree finished the wall and put her paint roller down, stepping back to take a look at her handiwork. Let me wash my hands, and we'll go down to the kitchen to iron out a menu. Are you going to let me sample everything beforehand? Kind of like a test run? Jennifer asked. Bree shook her head. Absolutely not. You've eaten my cooking. You know what it tastes like. Jennifer had been to parties that she and Becca had catered together more than once. Fine. Jennifer trailed behind her as Bree headed for the kitchen. It would be the easiest place for them to work, and Bree could start supper while they talked. I've never understood why all the girls in your family work, Jennifer said as she followed Bree down the stairs. Your family certainly doesn't need the money. Bree shook her head. Our family believes in women being independent. My mom was a homemaker, but that didn't make her any less strong. She taught us that we shouldn't have to depend on a man to survive. Uh-huh. Jennifer walked in and sat at the small table in the middle of the kitchen. Since I'm a customer, we should be doing this in the parlor, shouldn't we? If we do that, then I can't multitask and make supper at the same time. Bree pulled some carrots from the fridge and began peeling them. There's paper and pen in the middle of the table. What do you want me to fix? Are you just wanting snacks? Or am I doing a whole meal? The price you gave me was for a whole meal? The price I gave you was for three different appetizers, for two hundred people. If you want a real meal, the price doubles. Jennifer glared. You're trying to gouge me. I'm not. I simply expect to get paid for the work I do. A full meal is a lot more work than three appetizers. I need a cake too. I want a big wedding cake. I can arrange for that, but it will cost you. Why don't you run to the bakery yourself and have them make one for you? If I take my time to go to the bakery, and I won't bake it myself, no matter how much you beg, I'm going to charge you for that time. Save yourself some money. You're really being a pain, Bree. Why can't you be nice to me? I've seen you be nice to other people. Bree rolled her eyes and kept peeling. Let's get this done so I can get started prepping. You can't prep now. The food will go bad. I have a huge commercial freezer in my basement. I can prep most of it and freeze it, and then finish it up the day of the party. Oh. Jennifer frowned down at the pen and paper in her hands. My dad went to a party where you served sausage rolls, and he talked about nothing else for three weeks. Can you make those? Bree nodded. Write it down. Sausage rolls would be easy to prep in advance. In fact, she should probably just tell Jennifer how to make them herself and save the time, but she wanted the extra money. Maybe she could get that bored sidewalk out of this. 
Thirty minutes later, they'd decided on five appetizers, a type of punch, and a final price. If you want alcohol, you'll have to provide that and a bartender yourself. Bree slid a pork roast into the oven before turning around to look at Jennifer. Fine. Jennifer handed her the notebook she'd made notes in. And you're going to take care of getting the cake baked yourself? Yes, I'll do it, but I still think it should be your responsibility. Jennifer got to her feet. I probably shouldn't be giving money to my parents' competition anyway. We're not going to be competition for the hotel. We're going to be working together. The hotel is always sold out. This will give another option, and my guests will get a pass for the hot springs facilities. Your dad and I have spent a lot of time ironing things out, and trust me, this will be for the best. Fine. I'll check with you in a week to make sure you've got everything under control. And if we don't you're going to do the work yourself? Bree kept her tone light as she asked the question, but she knew Jennifer would be annoyed with her. You know I don't work. Jennifer turned to leave and stopped short when Anthony appeared in the doorway. Well, hello. As Bree watched, Jennifer's eyes traveled over Anthony, making it clear she liked what she saw. Anthony nodded at Jennifer. Hi. He smiled at Bree. You're cooking? Bree laughed. You're always hungry. Don't you have a dog to go home to? You should get a dog. She couldn't let Jennifer see how much she liked Anthony, or her efforts to take him away from her would double. She was childish that way. Jennifer looked back and forth between the two of them. She'd stolen more boyfriends from Bree than she had from anyone else in town, and she had the gleam in her eye again. Introduce me. Bree frowned, not wanting them to meet. Jennifer was known for flirting with every man in town, and she didn't want the competition. Jennifer, this is Anthony. He's the new contractor in town, and he's turning a bedroom into two bathrooms. Anthony, this is Jennifer, the girl who stole my crayons in kindergarten. And every boyfriend she's had since, Jennifer added, a smile on her face. She offered her hand to Anthony. Since you're new in town, I could show you around. Town's not that big, he replied. I've seen it. He didn't even want to look at the woman. Something about her made his skin crawl. Well, it's obvious you're hungry. You should come to the restaurant for dinner tonight. On me. Jennifer had never been one to give up easily. Sorry. I'm eating here. Bree's cooking is too good to pass up. He hadn't been invited, yet, but he had no desire to go anywhere with the woman in front of him. Bree turned away, hiding her grin. She knew it wouldn't last, but at least for now, Anthony was choosing her over Jennifer. Without thinking, she plucked the ingredients for a cake out of her cabinet and began mixing everything together. For his loyalty, he'd get cake for dessert. Jennifer took a step closer to Anthony and whispered, Brie is boring. Come spend the evening with me. Anthony shook his head. I have plans. Thanks anyway. He turned his back on the pushy blonde and walked over to where Brie was cooking. How can I help? Brie shook her head. You can stay out of the way for now. There were few times when she was willing to share her kitchen space with someone else and she'd never cooked with a man underfoot. I'm going to go home and shower, and I'll be back for dinner. What time? Jennifer frowned. I'm going to go then. I'll be back. I know you will, Bree said under her breath. Jennifer always came back, no matter how little she was wanted. What was that? Jennifer asked. Nothing meant for your ears. Bree responded. Anthony laughed, leaning down to kiss Bree's cheek. I'll see you in a couple of hours. Dinner's at six. If you're late, you don't get to eat, Bree told him. He walked around Jennifer, who was standing in the kitchen, gaping at them. How long have you two been going out? Jennifer asked as soon as he had shut the front door. Bree looked over her shoulder. 
Are you still here? We've only gone out once. Still easy for you to steal him. You know I will. No man will stay with you when I'm around. I know. There was no doubt in Bree's mind that eventually Anthony would choose Jennifer. It was nice to have him choose her for just a little while. Becca wandered into the kitchen. I finally finished. She headed straight for the coffee pot and poured some into a mug. Looking at Jennifer, she frowned. Slumming today? I hired Bree to cater my parents' anniversary party. Are you ready to dress up in your black and white serving clothes to feed my guests? Becca sighed. She'd better be paying us well. I could hire someone else, you know. Jennifer said, her nose in the air. Bree looked over her shoulder at Jennifer. Be my guest. She knew no one else in the area would take the job on such short notice. It was her or Jennifer could do it herself, and all three of them knew how unlikely Jennifer was to raise a finger. Jennifer shook her head. I'll be back in a week to check on you. She turned on her heel and left, leaving Bree alone with Becca. So did she hear you were dating someone and make up an excuse to come over? Or is there really a party? Becca took a sip of her coffee, studying her cousin over the rim of her mug. Oh, there's really a party with menu and all. But she did come on to Anthony while she was here. Why waste time? Never could stand her. That's because you're the best, most loyal friend in the whole wide world. And I love you for it. Becca had never lost a boyfriend to Jennifer, but most of the girls in school had. Anthony left? I figured he'd try to talk you into feeding him tonight. Oh, he didn't even bother to ask. He went home to shower, but he'll be back. How was your date? We haven't really had a chance to talk since. I've been dying to find out how it went. Bree shrugged, trying to seem nonchalant when she felt anything but. She wanted to grab her cousin by the arm and fill her in on every single detail, but after spending a little time with Jennifer, she was sure the relationship would never last. How could she be excited? It was good. We had a nice time. He told me he wants to marry me, but he's going to be dating Jennifer by this time next week. Is he a good kisser? Becca asked, watching Bree closely. Bree blushed. You really think I let him kiss me? I know you did by your blush. Tell me everything. Nope. Not happening. You have to tell me. I'm your favorite cousin. Becca wasn't used to being kept in the dark when it came to information about Bree's personal life. You are. I'm still not telling you anything. I'm not going to let myself get all excited about a relationship that's not going to go anywhere anyway. Becca frowned. Why don't you think it'll go anywhere? Jennifer's interested. We both know that once she's sunk her claws into him, he'll be gone forever. Not if he's worth anything, and he seems to be. Don't doubt yourself. Bree shrugged. I'm boring. I work hard, and I obsess about musicals. What's there for a man to be interested in? It had been the same her whole life. She'd had her first boyfriend in sixth grade, and he'd dumped her for Jennifer after a week. She'd lost her last boyfriend to the other woman just the previous year. No, once Jennifer was interested, a man never looked at her again. You're anything but boring, Bree. Anthony's different from the others. I don't think he's going to run off to her. Only time will tell. And if he does, you refuse to ever feed him again. That'll teach him. Bree laughed. Mama always said, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. I hope she's right. Just this once. You like him, don't you? You know, I do. Yesterday he annoyed the snot out of me, but last night, it was magical. I've never fallen hard and fast, Anthony is going to be the exception to that. Becca gave her a one-armed hug. Things will be great. You'll see. Asterisk. 
After dinner, Anthony offered to help with the dishes. Becca looked between the two of them and shook her head. No, I'll do the dishes. You two go, spend some time together. Brie looked at Anthony. I'm not sure what to do with you. She'd been on plenty of dates, but never at her home. When a man was in one's home, how did one entertain them? He laughed. Movie? She nodded. We could watch one of my favorite musicals. He groaned. Not that wicked one. Brie wrinkled her nose. Unfortunately, Wicked isn't a movie yet. We'll have to watch something else. West Side Story? Funny Girl? My Fair Lady? He shrugged. I've never seen any of them. My dad wasn't really into old musicals. Your education is lacking. Let's watch My Fair Lady. It's one of my favorites. She glanced at the clock on the microwave. Oh, wait. It's Tuesday. Lazy Love is on, and we're watching that. My favorite writer married one of the stars of it, and following her on Twitter got me addicted to the show. It's on in 45 minutes. Lazy Love? I've heard of that. Valerie Dobson and Jesse Savoy, right? Valerie changed her name to Savoy when she married Jesse. So Valerie and Jesse Savoy. I guess we can watch that. I've not seen it. Bree threaded her arm through his. We'll go watch in the formal guest parlor. We usually watch television in our rooms or in the basement, but you're a guest, right? You're welcome to think of me as a future husband if you'd like. She laughed and shook her head. You only say that because you haven't gotten to know Jennifer yet. As soon as the words were out of her mouth, she regretted them, but she knew she couldn't take them back. What does Jennifer have to do with anything? Bree sighed. She's stolen every boyfriend I've had since sixth grade. I know you don't think so now, but within a week or two, you two will be madly in love, and I'll be watching from the sidelines. Anthony frowned at her. You think I'm that shallow? No, I think she's some kind of witch who mixes up love potions and forces every man she meets to drink them. Don't accept any liquids from her, okay? He couldn't help but grin. I'll do my best. They sat snuggled together under a quilt her mother had made in the formal parlor where the guests would hang out once they were open. After her show was over, she yawned widely. I'm already exhausted. I'm not a night owl. He smiled, stroking her cheek. Neither am I. I'm in bed by nine or ten every night. I think I like that about you. I have to have something that attracts you to me. My heart will break otherwise. Bree grinned. She knew it wasn't going to last with him, but she'd enjoy every second she had until he went off after Jennifer. You have a few good qualities, I guess. He laughed. I'm a good kisser. Really? Have you kissed yourself? No, but I turned you into butter last night. Butter? Did you just compare me to butter? Have you lost your mind? You know how butter turns to absolute liquid when it melts. That's how you are when I kiss you. Anthony cupped her cheek and leaned in, brushing his lips against hers to demonstrate. See? Brie felt as if her bones were turning to liquid. I didn't turn to butter. But she had, and they both knew it. Oh no? She shrugged. Well, maybe I did, but you don't need to go around bragging about it. I wasn't supposed to turn to butter. He grinned. You know what, Brie Roberts? She shook her head. Nope. What? I like you more with every minute we spend together. Let's run away and get married next week. We can raise babies. Not happening. We have to give it at least two weeks, so you can run off with Jennifer, and I won't have to get a divorce. In my family we marry forever. I'm not running off with anyone but you. He leaned down and kissed her once more. 
I am going to run off and go to bed though. I'm training to run eight miles, and I need my sleep. She laughed. How'd the run go this morning? I forgot to ask. I only made it two miles. I'll do better tomorrow. Don't push too hard. You'll be too sore to work, and I need those bathrooms done as soon as possible. We already have reservations for the first weekend in April, and I'm not giving extra business to the hotel. She cared more about how he felt than she did the bathrooms, but she wasn't quite ready to admit that yet. She couldn't tell him that he meant something to her, because he'd be gone soon. It would make the heartbreak just a bit less humiliating. Do you have something against the hotel? he asked, surprised. She seemed to be amicable with everyone from what he could see. Not exactly. Jennifer's parents run the place though and that makes it harder for me to tolerate. She shrugged. I have a good relationship with them. She's the only fly in the ointment. I can see that. He stood, taking her hand and pulling her toward the front door with him. Dream of me. She smiled. I will, but you have to dream of me too. That's easy to do. Chapter 5 Bree saw Anthony on her run again the following morning, but he didn't turn to run with her. He simply waved and kept going. For a moment, she felt a pang, worried that Jennifer had already gotten to him, but she reasoned with herself that he simply didn't want to run together until he was ready to run the full eight miles. When she reached Books and Beans, Emma was waiting for her as always. Did you make dessert for lunch today yet? Emma asked, snapping the lid onto her coffee. Not yet. I'll do it before I get to work today. What's on the agenda today? I'm going to make curtains for the Wicked and Sound of Music rooms. Then I'm going to start on the throw pillows for each if I have time. Might not with lunch at Mom's. The snow was kind enough to hold off until after your run, but we're still supposed to get three or four inches today. Want me to swing by and pick you up on the way to mom's? Emma asked. That would be great if you don't mind. How's your contractor? Word is he was there late last night. He was out the door before 9.15. That's not late. Bree couldn't believe people were talking about her so much. Did Becca call you? Of course she did. We're excited about you having a love life finally. What about you? You don't have a love life. You're older than me. Emma sighed. I guess I'll have to live vicariously. Bree took her coffee and the bag with her breakfast in it. I'll be ready at eleven. See you then. The snow had started to fall as she walked the rest of the way back home, and she was thankful she lived in Colorado. She hated to drive in snow as much as she loved to walk in it. How could anyone complain about such a beautiful piece of land? Anthony was waiting in his truck and got out as soon as he saw her. He had an empty donut bag in his hand. Do you ever eat anything healthy? When I'm not feeding you, I mean? He shook his head. Of course not. I'm a 26-year-old man. I'll worry about eating healthy when I'm in my 30s. She shook her head. I have lunch at my mom's every Wednesday, so you're on your own for lunch. Are you kidding me? He asked, holding the back of his hand to his forehead. What if I die of starvation, because there was nothing healthy for me to eat? She shook her head. So you think I should cook for you, even if I'm not going to eat it? Well, Becca needs to eat too, doesn't she? Or is she going with you? No, lunch is just my immediate family. She sighed. I guess I can throw lunch together for you guys while I'm making dessert. Dessert? You're going to make us dessert too? Are you always going to try to take advantage of my cooking? She asked, raising an eyebrow at him. Take advantage? Never. Beg nicely? Always. You've got real issues, Anthony Black. He leaned down and kissed her. You need a shower, Brina Roberts. Get to work. 
She hurried away from him and up the stairs, fighting back a giggle. She should be offended that he told her she needed a shower, but the truth was she knew she needed one. She'd just run eight miles. Of course she needed a shower. When she was dressed and ready for her day, she headed down to the kitchen to throw something together for lunch for Becca and Anthony and make dessert for her family. She thought long and hard about what to make for dessert and finally decided on brownies. It was simple enough to make a double batch. While the brownies were baking, she put together a chicken pot pie and stuck it in the fridge. She'd throw it in the oven before she left, and Becca could get it out and serve it. Her cousin would be thrilled to have her Wednesday lunch taken care of. While the brownies were cooling, she headed to the basement to sew. She'd get the curtains done before lunch, and she would do the pillows in the afternoon. She didn't enjoy sewing the way her mother did, but she knew how, and she was more than willing to put in the work when she needed to. She'd thought about asking her mother to make the curtains and pillows, but she'd already begged for her to make quilts for each room, so she didn't feel like she could be too greedy with her mother's time. She finished the curtains and had just enough time to hang them before she needed to wake Becca. She knocked on her cousin's door and walked in. Hey, I have family lunch, but I made a pot pie for you and Anthony. I'm going to put it in the oven, but you need to be downstairs to get it out of there by 11.30. Becca hid her yawn behind her hand. Okie dokie. I kind of like you dating the contractor. I get better food. Don't get used to it. Already have. Becca climbed out of bed and headed straight to the bathroom, while Brie went downstairs. She popped the pot pie into the oven and hurried to check on Anthony's progress. He'd gotten the walls up between the two rooms. Looks good. Anthony looked over at her. You sure do. She blushed. I meant the bathrooms. I know. That's not what I mean, though. He winked at her, a goofy grin on his face. Lunch is in the oven. Becca's going to take it out at 11.30. I just wanted to see how you were progressing before I left for lunch. You know I'm not a scary guy to take home to your mama. She eyed him for a minute, contemplating his words. No, you're not, but not on a Wednesday. It's not a good time. Wednesdays are the days we all sit around picking on each other. Someday you can come, but today's not when you want to meet the family. He walked to her and kissed the tip of her nose. All right. How long does this lunch of yours take? At least a couple of hours. I'll be back before two at the latest. That's a long lunch. I want to watch one of those movies with you tonight. She nodded. I'll make a pizza, and we'll eat in front of the television. Then we won't be up too late. What time should I get here? Six. See you then. Bree hurried down the stairs to get her coat and gloves on. She wouldn't keep her sister waiting. Emma had just pulled her SUV into the parking lot, punctual as always. Hurrying out, she got into the passenger seat, setting the brownies on her lap. Hi, you. What's for dessert? Double chocolate brownies. My favorite. Are you going to tell mom about your contractor? Bree shook her head. Not unless she asks. You know how Silver Springs is. He looked at me once, so I'm sure she's planning our wedding. Emma nodded. She probably knows all about him. She turned into the driveway and put the vehicle in park. I'll try to distract her if she brings him up. You mean when? Bree shrugged. No skin off my nose. I just don't want her to get any ideas. Jennifer is definitely interested in him. You don't really think that blonde floozy is going to take him from you, do you? Bree shrugged. She always has in the past. Becca says he's different. I hope Becca's right. You know what an optimist she is though. He could be halfway out the door, and she'd still expect him to turn around and come back to me. This is true. 
they walked to the door and opened it. Mom, we're here. Brie called as she walked through the house into the kitchen, knowing their mother would be there. It seemed to her that her mother spent half her days in the kitchen, and she'd obviously rubbed off on both daughters. They each had cooking as part of their daily jobs. She'd raised them well. I brought brownies. Brie handed the plate with the cut squares to her mother as she kissed her cheek. Thanks. Mom put the brownies on the counter. Now tell me all about this Anthony of yours, before your dad and brother get here. Brie exchanged a look with Emma. He's not my Anthony, Mom. I just met him on Monday. He's a nice man, and he's doing some work on Grandma's house. There's not much else to tell. That's not what I heard. I heard he took you to River House, and he was looking at you like you were Audrey Hepburn, Sandra Bullock, and Grace Kelly all rolled into one. Mom kissed Emma's cheek before turning back to Brie. So? Are you two dating? We've gone out once, and he had dinner with Becca and I last night. There's really nothing to tell. Has he kissed you? Brie blushed. Why does everyone keep asking me that? Because you blush. He has kissed you. Mom gave her an inquiring look. The door opened and slammed shut. Mom, I'm here. Jack yelled from the other room. Hey, big brother. Brie took the opportunity to run from the conversation and hugged Jack. How was your week? Not as good as yours. I hear you and the contractor were steaming up the windows of his truck Monday night. He kissed their mother on the cheek and grabbed a pinch of a brownie. We were not. Brie blushed. You guys have got to stop saying things like that. You just don't want Dad to know it's true. Jack said, frowning at her. You shouldn't go around kissing guys that I haven't met yet. I need to know if he's good enough for my baby sister. Bree rolled her eyes. Jennifer is interested. She knew the words would be enough to convey her thoughts. They'd know he'd be gone soon. If he has half a brain, he won't have his head turned by her. Want me to swoop in and ask her out? She's been after me for years. I could mess with her long enough for him to realize she's not worth dating. Jack reached for another bite of brownie, but Mom slapped his hand away. Ouch. No, I do not want you to date her. I can't stand her. What if you fell for her? and I had to spend the rest of my life with her as my sister-in-law. It would be all my fault. Jack laughed. I don't think I'm quite blind enough to fall for her. I sure hope not. Bree started carrying the dishes into the dining room. Lunch smells delicious, Mom. The door slammed shut again. I'm here. Mom shook her head at Dad. Sometimes I wonder why our children behave like heathens, slamming doors and yelling at me when they arrive. And then you come in and I know exactly why. Dad grabbed Mom by her arms and kissed her soundly. I'm your favorite heathen. Mom laughed. You definitely are. Now wash up so we can have a nice lunch. Dad didn't mention Anthony until they were almost finished with dessert. Brie had just convinced herself that he hadn't heard anything yet, but she should have known. I haven't met this man of yours yet, Brie. Why didn't you bring him to lunch? Brie shook her head. He did try to invite himself, but I thought it would be best if he didn't come. Not yet anyway. I need to make sure he's going to stay. She's worried about Jennifer Olson. Jack broke off another bite of brownie and popped it into his mouth. Great brownies, Brie. Dad sighed. That brat still after every man you date? Of course. She seems to think if a man dates me, he's fair game. Brie took a sip of her milk. Let's give it a couple of weeks, and if he's still around, I'll invite him to meet everyone. Mom changed the subject, obviously sensing that Brie was uncomfortable. I hear you're catering the Olsen's anniversary party. Brie nodded. Jennifer forgot their anniversary, 
and hadn't asked anyone to do it until last night. So she came to me. She knew we'd want the extra money for the band B, and we'd take the job at the last minute. Don't let her take advantage of you, Dad warned. I told her I was charging her double, just because she came to me at the last minute. And I'm charging a whole lot more than I probably should, but she makes me crazy. Good girl. You should charge her at least double. She's always felt like she could run over you, and it's not okay. Emma smiled at Brie, letting her know how much she approved. On the drive back to the band B, Emma reminded her that she was every bit as good as Jennifer. You know she likes to think she's better, but the truth is she's lazy. Never works. She just flits around, driving to Denver to shop, and acting like she's better than everyone else. I know. And she drives a flashy vehicle that mommy and daddy bought for her. We work for everything we have, because our parents raised us right. Emma stopped in front of the band B. I want to come in and meet him. You need to get back to work, Bree responded. You were just talking about work ethic. I need to use the bathroom. I'll just say hi and leave. Go away, Emma. You don't have to go that bad. You don't know how badly I need to go. You can't tell me that. Brie blew a kiss at her sister. See you in the morning. Emma wrinkled her nose as Brie got out of her vehicle. I'm going to meet him soon, you know. I know. I know. Have a good day. You too. Brie hurried into the house, checking the kitchen for a mess first thing. Becca had done the dishes, so there wasn't anything there to do. Brie went into the basement and started on the throw pillows. She couldn't wait to get the furniture in the rooms and the quilts on the beds. There would be furniture delivered on Monday. She was getting more excited by the day. Her dream was coming true. After she'd finished the pillows, she went upstairs and peeked out the window to see if Anthony's truck was still there. She couldn't believe how disappointed she was when she realized it was gone. She went into the kitchen and started the dough for the pizza. She preferred to make her dough from scratch, but she usually used a bottled sauce. She could make it taste just as good, but for the most part it was easier to use a store-bought. She slid two large pizzas into the oven at 5.30, hoping he would be back. She hadn't spoken to Anthony since before lunch, and she wasn't certain if Jennifer had already gotten to him or not. Becca came into the kitchen and sniffed while she was at the table, reading on her Kindle. Her face was red from the cold. I got the parking lot shoveled out. She held her hands over the stove, turning them over to warm them. Did you and Anthony have a good lunch? Sure. It was delicious. He ate three servings. There isn't any left. Bree shook her head. I didn't expect there to be with him around. Jennifer came by while you were gone. What did she want? Becca shrugged. She asked if you had any more information for her about the party, but I think she was really here to see Anthony. Everyone in town knows your whole family meets for lunch on Wednesday, and she waited until you were out of sight before she came over. How did he react? Bree was afraid of the answer. Was that why he'd left without saying goodbye? He told her he was dating you, and she should go away. Seriously? Seriously. She just laughed and told him that he'd figure out soon enough that she was the one he wanted. I can't stand her. Have I told you that before? Bree smiled. Only about a hundred times. I'd listen to it a few thousand more. I'll say it a few thousand more too. I don't know why she chose you as her victim back in elementary school, but I've hated her ever since. Honestly, I think she was jealous of our friendship. We had each other as built-in friends from the first day of school. We already had someone to sit next to and put our nap mat by. She didn't have anyone, and with the way she treated people, she really never had a best friend. She changed from year to year. Remember when she tried to become all chummy with you? Becca tilted her head to one side, thinking about it. 
was that third grade? I think it was. I just remember that she followed us around everywhere, and she kept trying to talk to you whenever we got separated. That's right. You know, you may be on to something. She's jealous of our friendship. Bree nodded. And I think that's why she always worked so hard to steal my boyfriends too. She wanted what I had, a really close friend she could never lose. Now that I think about it, when you and I got into that big fight in seventh grade over Tommy Dean, she tried to get close to me then too. She told me you were saying bad things about me. And then we sat down and talked and decided that Tommy Dean was a jerk, and she kissed him under the bleachers at the football game, and we just laughed. I think that made her mad too. Bree smiled at the memory. She and Becca had let a boy come between them for exactly one week, before they'd realized that no boy was worth losing each other over. I'm sure it did. Becca sighed. She's been a pain in my behind since the first day of kindergarten, but it was so much worse for you. I wanted to protect you from her, but I never felt like I could. No one could. She had it in her head that it was her job to make my life miserable and she succeeded, at times. But you know what? I think she did me a favor for the most part. She showed me how flighty the boys I dated were. She showed me who my real friends were. Bree shrugged. I'm good. Becca smiled. I'm glad you can see that. I still hate her though. You won't hate her when you hear what I'm charging her for the catering. We're going to get that board sidewalk we wanted out of it. I asked Anthony for a quote, and we'll clear enough to do it. She should forget about her parents' anniversary more often. Bree grinned. I have no problem taking advantage of her forgetfulness. I'm going to do the work, but I'm doing it on my terms, not on hers. She glanced at the clock on the microwave. Anthony's supposed to be back here in five minutes. I'm worried he won't come. Because of Jennifer? You should have seen the disgust on his face. Trust me, he'll be back. If only to eat your cooking. I think he's already ready to propose to you, just so you'll keep feeding him. He keeps asking me to run away and marry him. I know it's because of my cooking, though, so I ignore him. Becca laughed. He's come right out and asked you to marry him already? You should do it. Nah. I need to make sure he's sticking first. You know we don't divorce in our family. I'm going to make sure that he's the right one before I even consider marrying him. How will you know? Bree shrugged. I have no idea. The front door opened and a deep voice called, Honey, I'm home. Bree shook her head. He's going to fit in with the family perfectly. Mom was just lamenting at lunch today that Dad taught all of us kids to slam the door and yell that we were there. Becca laughed. Well, I think you've found your match. 